Why is my body dying? Well, sin. The wages of sin is death. Uh, <clears throat> and all have sinned, all have sinned. Sin is universal. All has sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not a righteous soul upon the whole earth, the Word of God tells us, you see? And, and so uh, the sting of death is sin, you see? And that's why we're all dying. Now, before Adam and Eve sinned, they were, they were, uh, et they were e alive eternally. But when they sinned, uh, death started. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, sin is the sting of death. And then notice in verse 56, there's another remarkable statement in the word of God. And the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. Now you've heard of, you've heard of God's laws, I'm sure. Uh, and specifically, uh, you're probably, you have uh, familiarity with uh, at least 10 of God's laws, although there are hundreds of laws, but, uh, but uh, most commonly referenced are uh, the 10 commandments. Those are God's uh, ten of God's laws, and uh, you know what? You're probably able, you're probably able to uh, maybe quote all ten of those commandments, or maybe you can quote, uh, you know, half of them, or or you know, two or three of them, or maybe even one of those laws. Isn't that an interesting statement? And the strength of sin is the law. Well, that's because nobody has kept God's laws. Nobody does keep God's laws. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that nobody has kept God's laws? Uh, what is sin? Well, sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is disobedience to God's laws. That's what defines sin. So uh, when a person disobeys one of God's laws, that constitutes sin against God. Well, how many people have sinned against God? How many people have, in fact, disobeyed God's laws? <laughs> well, I bring you back again. Uh, to uh, Romans chapter 3, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You see? So the fact is, and God knows, and the truth is, we've all broken God's laws. And so that is the strength of sin. That is the strength of sin, is the law. When we, when we read God's laws and then we make an honest assessment of our lives, I said honest assessment of our lives, we can only come to but one Conclusion, and do you know what that conclusion is? As we look at God's laws and then we look and we think about what we've done in our lives, we can only come to one conclusion. We have all sinned against God because we've all broken God's laws, you see? And that's why uh, <clears throat> the strength of sin is the law. I mean, we are, we, are, uh, we are convicted by the laws of God. Uh, and there's, there's just, you know, if you're an honest person, there's no denying it. There's no getting around it. There's no getting out of it. When you look at your life and you look at God's commandments, it's like, uh-oh, I broke those commandments. And so, uh, and so, uh, 
It's a fact. And our bodies are dying. But everybody wants to live. Nobody wants to die. Now notice uh, what, look, you know, everybody right now is looking for uh, the cure of this disease. Well, I want you to look at sin's cure. I want you to look at the victory over sin. I want you to see, you know, when I say victory over sin, what I'm saying is I want you to see with me the victory over death. You know, that's what everybody right now is they want to find the cure over the death that this virus is causing. And, you know, because everybody wants to live, right? Nobody wants to get sick. Well, look at this in verse 57. Here's the cure uh, or the victory over uh, that which is, uh, you know, killing us uh, 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 spiritually and killing us physically, sin. Uh, verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, uh, victory over what? Well, if you're keeping in context, you know what the victory is over. It's over death. I mean, that's what the passage is plainly speaking about, is the fact that our bodies are corrupt and uh, we're dying, and how that uh, death is swallowed up in victory. And how was death swallowed up in victory? By uh, the person of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at how Christ swallowed up death. And, and why it is, and how it is that when, when we repent, and, and we just get honest with God about the fact that we've broken his commandments. No matter how, try, how, how hard we try to look good in front of others, right? In, in, you know, even in places of religion, uh, how, how hard we try to do good and, and to work hard uh, so that we can impress others. Um, you know, look... Um, there's only one way to impress God, uh, and I, I'm going to show you how to impress God, and uh, it, and it 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 leads to a victory over uh, sin and death, and it leads to uh, eternal life with Him, and uh, yes, uh, that's available if you're available unto it. So. Now, I want to invite you, uh, if you would, then please, Acts chapter 2, uh, Acts chapter number 2, and keeping in mind that uh, David is, he knows he's got to go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, and, uh, you know, the fact is, in, in, a, in a metaphorical sense, or in a, in a, in a uh, typical uh, way right now, uh, listen, folks, we've got a lot, of, a lot of shadows of death all across the nation and all around the world right now. And we've got to walk through those because at some point we're going to have to go get what we need for the sustenance of our lives, the sustenance of our health. And, you know, um, despite the fact that, uh, you know, there is, there is a prospect of death uh, or... Uh, if not death, uh, just uh, really terrible suffering. Uh, and I don't have to tell you, you've seen the news accounts. Uh, uh, and so Acts uh, chapter 2 now, and uh, we're going to see some more commentary about David. And what we're going to find in Acts chapter 2 is an answer to the question I asked earlier, why could David say that he fears no evil as he's, as he's going to be confronted by death going through that valley? He, he says, I fear no evil. And remember what he says, for thou art with me. Thou art with me. That's the key. And let me ask you a question right now. Is Jesus with you? Oh, you say, well, I, I, I'm a member of a church. No, that, that's, that's, not, that's not the answer. Listen to the question again, please. Is Jesus Christ with you? Well, I, I was baptized. I, I, I was baptized, you know, and they used water. 
uh, to baptize me in, in, in some form or another, uh, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, that, that's, that's not, that's not what I asked, you know, and I'm asking this in love, and I'm asking this respectfully to you, again, uh, is Jesus Christ with you. You see, David said that he did not fear death because the Lord was with him. You see, uh, he's not talking about a religion. He's not talking about a baptism. Uh, he, you know, he's not talking about any of his accomplishments, you know, his good deeds, his good works. Uh, you know what? David cites one reason only for why he does not fear walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, he knows that people get killed there all the they die there all the time. He knows. In fact, in fact, uh, he, he, there's a very real prospect that his that his rebellious son Absalom has some uh, some people in various places along that valley uh, that are positioned to take his father David out. I mean, you know, David, David's a warrior. D David knows all the tricks. He, he knows all the methodologies. He knows, all, he knows it all. You know, he's been there. He's done it. But he says, I've got to walk through that valley to leave this city of Jerusalem. But he says, I don't fear. I don't fear death. That's what he says. And, and he says, and he says, it's because the Lord is with me. You see? Now, um, let's pick it up in Acts chapter 2, if you would, please. Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2. Please uh, join me there. Open your Bible and turn along, follow along. Acts chapter 2. And uh, referring again back to the passion of Christ, his death. Verse 23, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. You need to understand that before God created uh, the, uh, the heaven and the earth, God had already made the plan of salvation. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? God went ahead with creation and with uh, making man and from man the woman. And, and uh, you know, God saw the end from the beginning. God saw the whole picture. And yet, uh, because he loves you and he loves me, he proceeded and he had already made his plan of redemption beyond the fact of our fall into sin uh, and uh, the consequential death that always is, is the price tag for sin. The wages of sin is death. Um, God made a plan and God's plan was that he would come, that Emmanuel would come, that God with us would come, and that God would pay the penalty personally that he had placed on sin, which is death. He told Adam, Adam and Eve both knew if they sinned against God, it would result in their death. And, you know, the fact that we're dying physically and the fact that until we repent and accept Jesus, Jesus, our spirit is dead, that part of us that uh, makes it possible for us to have a relationship with God, God is a spirit, God is spirit, and, uh, and if we're going to worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, Jesus uh, taught us in the Gospel of John. But the fact that we're dying uh, is, is traced back to original sin, you see. And, 
And, and so, you know, somebody says, well, I want proof for the Genesis account. Well, uh, you know what? You're dying. And that's the reason you're dying. And that is the explanation for why you're dying. Uh, but God, even though uh, he knew the cost to himself personally, still created the heaven and the earth and, and, and man and, uh, and, and, and of course uh, sin entered in, uh, you know, and death. By sin and, and sickness and disease and heartache and heartbreak and and uh, but God's plan was to come to earth and to pay his own penalty that he had placed upon sin against him, which is death. God came and paid the penalty. Why did God do that? So that you don't have to pay it so that I don't have to pay it if we are but willing to accept him, to invite him to come into our lives. Which goes back to why God created, why God made you. He desires more than anything else to be in a personal relationship with you, filled with, with his love, and that is God's purpose, that is God's desire, is to know you for all of eternity, for you to be with him and to share the blessings of eternity forevermore. And God took your place and paid the penalty that we all should have paid because of our sins against God. And he offers us the gift of eternal life. That brings me back to the question. Uh, David said, uh, you know, he doesn't fear death because the Lord is with me. And I'm asking you again, is the Lord with you? Well, you know what? Uh, that comes to this that comes to this question then have you ever invited jesus the lord jesus christ uh emmanuel god with us have you ever invited uh jesus uh savior have you ever invited him to come into your life have you ever asked him to come into your life <laughs> i mean you know he's there he's waiting he's waiting Waiting for your invitation. Notice this in, in Acts chapter 2, then if you would please. And, uh, and, and uh, so uh, referring to Jesus, the Lamb of God, uh, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified him. That happened uh, uh, by the foreknowledge of God. God already saw the whole picture. He saw it all. And then in verse number 24 of Acts chapter 2, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, referring to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Look at this. If you get one thing from this message, I hope you'll get this. Verse 24 of Acts chapter 2. Because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Death, the grave, could not keep could not hold Jesus Christ. Now, why is that? Well, because whose sins did Jesus die for? You know, the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. He did not die for his, his own sins, do you remember that cup in the garden there at Gethsemane that he prayed three times? Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But of course it was not possible. And do you remember the reference in 1 Peter in chapter 1 where the Bible tells us and, and states very plainly that Jesus took our sins into his own body? And those were not his sins 
The sins that Jesus took into his own body, those were your sins. Those were my sins. In fact, 1 John tells us that Christ died for the sins of the world. Those were the sins of the world that Jesus took into his own body. And when Jesus Christ died, and he went to the lower parts of the earth, and we're, we're going to see that, and if you'll do your Greek word study, the lower parts of the earth, that's hell. And when Jesus Christ went to hell, the grave could not keep him. Do you know why that is? Because Christ was sinless. You see, he had no sins of his own. Those were not his sins he died for. Those were your sins and my sins. And when he met with death in hell, in that place that he called hell, a literal place, when he went there, Death had to release Jesus Christ and the grave could not hold Jesus Christ because the only way that the grave and death can hold a person is if they are sin in, in guilt and sin. But Jesus had no sin. He was sinless. And he was released from death and he was victorious over death, and he was victorious over sin. And he did that for you, and he did that for me. And whosoever will may come. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not automatic. It involves your personal decision to invite Jesus Christ to accept him and invite him to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins and to save you from death in hell because only he can do that because only he is sinless and therefore only he has the power over, over uh, the grave and over death and over sin and he's just waiting for you to come to him and to call upon him and to invite him to come into your life. And then he will, by virtue of the fact that you accept him, he will give you that victory that becomes yours in Christ Jesus. The victory over death, the victory over sin, the victory over hell the victory over an eternal separation from God in an awful place that Jesus calls hell, he will give you that victory because that is what he purchased for you by his death, his burial, and his resurrection from the dead. And it's all available unto you if you're available unto those that eternal life that is gifted to those who will believe in Jesus Christ. And so, uh, you know, what a powerful, uh, remarkable statement there in uh, verse 24 of Acts chapter 2. Now let's uh, continue on in verse 25. For David speaketh concerning him. Uh, again, now we're back to David. Okay, for David speaketh concerning him that would... That would be concerning Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you know, uh, David trusted, believed in Jesus Christ, the same as uh, today uh, we, we, we do, those of us who will do. Uh, and he says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. Now we know why David was not afraid to go into the valley of the shadow of death he said, the Lord is with me. And here he says it in, in another way. He says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. 
and the Lord was with him. And uh, at no time was David without the Lord, his God, his Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, he, so he, here's the fact. Here's the fact. And really what David is saying in the 23rd Psalm when he says, um, you know, I, I, I fear no evil, referring to death. Death is evil. Death is man's enemy. But David said, I don't fear it. And he said, and the reason he didn't fear it is because for David, death was not, an, it was not a possibility. It just wasn't even possible for David to die because David had invited Jesus to come into his life. And when David did that, when David believed in Jesus, remember that verse a while back, the question that Jesus is asking, believest thou this? He that believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this? Do you remember that question that Jesus is still posing today? We see when Jesus comes into your life because you invite him to come into your life, he defeats death, he defeats the power of sin, he defeats the penalty of sin, which is hell, death and hell. And when we go to be with him, he, he will defeat even the very presence of sin because there is no sin in heaven. And, and so David had made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as his personal savior and that meant that he would never die. Now, uh, we say, what about that body? Well, yeah, sure enough. But remember, and here's where we get in, here's kind of where we get a little, little bit of problem in our thinking is, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I don't have time to go there, but I cite the reference, and I hope that you will, your body serves this function. It is, it is the earthly tabernacle. It is, it is literally the dwelling place of your soul and spirit, the other two parts of your tripart being. And it's like, it's like you live in your body. Your body is your house. It is your dwelling place here on earth. But you, the person that you are, is your soul. And your soul is the seat of all your emotions. <laughs> so what are you saying, preacher? Well, uh, what I'm saying is, and what the Bible tells us is, that... Uh, the real you lives inside of that body. And, and, what, and what David is saying when he says, you know, I've got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and he says, but I, I fear no evil, and then he tells us why, for thou art with me. What he's telling us is, nothing can kill me. And now he's not referring to his physical body. He's not referring to the house that he lives in. He's referring to who he really is. And that is his soul and his spirit, which came alive when he repented and accepted Jesus. And that's why he's, his spirit, that's why he, uh, that's why he has this wonderful personal relationship he says you know your face is always before me he says about jesus about god he says because when he when he accepted jesus and god washed all of his sins away you know uh then there's no longer anything between david and god amos said your sins have come between you and your god well those sins were all cleansed and 
And so David was in constant, this constant relationship with God, and, it, and it's all because of his faith in Jesus, you see, in the Lamb of God and the one who died to pay for his sins. So, you know, um, see, somehow, somehow, as, as, a, as a, a, you know, as, as people, uh, we have come to think and to believe that our body is the real us. You know, we do all these things to our physical body. Uh, your, body is your, your body is where the real you lives. Uh, the real you lives inside of your body. And, you know, uh, Paul said to be absent from the body, if you, if you are a believer... If you have accepted Jesus Christ, uh, this is the way it works. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See? And so, um, and, then, and then eventually, uh, even your body will be transformed and you'll be given a glorified body. Uh, Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So, it's just real important that we get our thinking in line with the Word of God. Uh, but, you know, once Jesus comes into your life, because you invite him to come in, uh, you don't live in the fear of death thereafter. You, you know, somebody said you cannot threaten a, Christ, a Christian with death. <laughs> because really... When a Christian is being threatened with death, or it, it, should death come to the physical body of a Christian, all that means is they go, they go right away to be with the Lord. You know, the, and, and by the way, by the way, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, you're not living alone in your body. You're no longer alone. Uh, you know, Jesus... Because you invited him to come in, he lives with you. And, and that's what David is saying when he says, I do always behold your face. I mean, Jesus is there because you invited him uh, to come into your life. And he bears witness with your spirit that you are his child. So you have, uh, you have the assurance of eternal life. And, and then not only does he come in, but he says, you know, once he comes in, he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, uh, you know, at no time will you ever go through anything alone for the remainder of your life here upon earth while you live in your physical body, which is your earthly house, you know. And, you know, so... Um, what a marvelous passage this is. You know, I just hope that it gives you some food for thought and, and that you'll consider Christ uh, uh, as for your own personal salvation, forgiveness of sins, salvation from hell. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, there it is, Acts chapter 2. Um, and... Uh, Let's see, uh, let's, let's continue on just a little bit more here. For David, speak, verse 25, speaketh concerning him, concerning Jesus. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Uh, you know, moved here means, uh, you know, uh, to be um, destroyed. It means, you know, to be defeated, overthrown. Um, and because the victory is in Christ, and when Jesus comes into your life, you're, you know, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is just no longer a threat to you, if you know Jesus. Uh, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Uh, moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Uh, my flesh shall rest in hope. Uh, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Praise God for that. Um, the Old Testament saints 
Uh, they went to paradise with Abraham, Father Abraham. And, um, of course, when Jesus uh, came and uh, he uh, rose again, uh, look what he did. Look what he did here um, in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter number uh, 4 and verse 8 through 10. So while Jesus, uh, you know, he suffered, he, he bled, he died, he was buried. And uh, here's what Jesus was doing. Um, and David's, David knew that Jesus would not leave his soul in, in uh, that, uh, the uh, abode of the believer's paradise, which was uh, called Sheol uh, in the Old Testament, Gehenna, uh, which also had another compartment uh, in, in that dispensation called, uh, called uh, the burning, uh, you know, the burning hell, literally, the burning hell. Um, Right, the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and cried, Father Abraham, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. But, you know, the rich man uh, just decided that Jesus Christ was not important and uh, enjoyed his riches and died and uh, is now uh, spending a Christless eternity uh, where he is paying for his own sins. Um, and uh, so the consequences of rejecting Christ um, are, are just, uh, well, eternity in hell. Um, but God would that none should perish, but that all should come under repentance. You know, we're left with a choice, you know? It's our choice. But here's what Jesus did. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 8, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended far uh, above all heavens that he might fill all things. So, uh, when, when David says, you know, I know that you're, you're not going to leave my soul in hell. Well, when Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth, he gathered the, the uh, Old Testament saints um, uh, that were there with Abraham, and he took them with him uh, when he ascended. So uh, back to Acts chapter number 2. Uh, and uh, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now that's referring to Jesus, the fact uh, that his uh, body came out of the grave uh, prior to corruption. Um, thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Um, David goes on to say, of course, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, whosoever hath the Son hath life. Whosoever hath not the Son hath not life. The Son of God hath not life. Uh, so uh, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. And uh, so that countenance David's referring to that uh, that wonderful fellowship that the believer enjoys with God because uh, he uh, is now living within uh, the uh, believer's heart and life and, uh, and they just have wonderful joy. Uh, so you know, God, God waits your invitation to come in um, and I would encourage you uh, to extend that invitation to him right now as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, I pray especially uh, right now for those who, like me, want to live. I mean, you know, um, what a blessed thought uh, that David feared no evil because thou, he said, thou art with me. Um, death was just not possible for David. Um, referring to the death of his soul, the death of his spirit. Um, and it wasn't referring to his body because the, the fact is uh, 
the body will die, and, and that's where the sin nature is. Um, and But David's soul and his spirit would never die because uh, he had accepted uh, Jesus Christ, and he was uh, blessed with eternal life and, uh, and forgiveness of all of his sins. And so he was not afraid of death. Uh, and if we do not know Jesus Christ, if, if we've never invited Jesus to come into our lives, then we have good reason to be afraid of, of death and hell. Those sins will be paid for. And by accepting Christ, he pays for them. By rejecting Christ, we pay for those sins against God, but those sins, they must be paid for. Um, so, Father, um, you know, I just pray that you touch hearts, speak to hearts, even right now. And uh, if you're joining us uh, here by video, uh, I would encourage you right now where you are, uh, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ um, before, uh, but, and you know that God wants you to do that right now. I mean, you, you, you can just, you just know that God is saying, I want you to accept Jesus into your life right now. Then would you pray in a very heartfelt, very sincere way? Would you pray right now, dear Jesus, I'm inviting you to come into my life. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Lord Jesus, please save me right now from that awful place you call hell. And please give me the gift of eternal life so that I can be forever with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you died to pay for my sins. And thank you that you've just taken the death threat away from me because I have been given eternal life. Help me to live for you for the rest of my time here upon the earth. Now, Father, those, uh, Lord, who have just prayed uh, to accept Jesus Christ, I, I pray that you would just fill their lives with uh, joy and peace and just... Uh, they're rejoicing that you just lifted off all the guilt of sin, all that weight, that burden, uh, that condemnation, it's gone. Uh, and they now, uh, Lord, have become your children by faith in Jesus Christ. God bless them, I pray. We hope we get to meet them. If, if not here on earth, then we most assuredly uh, in heaven. Uh, but... Uh, Lord, uh, if uh, they do live in the valley, we hope you'll lead them uh, to a service here so that we can enjoy their fellowship and, uh, and just get to know them and rejoice with them. God bless, I pray, uh, until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen.